praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Remain standing. Let's look in St. Mark's Gospel. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 2. Thank you again for your faithfulness tonight and your love gifts and all that you're doing for us. Thank you, Pastor Smith, for allowing us to come stand behind this sacred desk. We're enjoying the blessings of the Lord and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that God is doing something to us, in us, for us, and through us. Because it's not going to stop with us. He's going to bless us and make us a blessing. <laughs> I thank God for what He's doing. How many has been blessed of the Lord so far? Hadn't the Lord moved in a mighty way, I tell you. I told Pastor last night, I said, if it gets any better, I'll just tag you. We'll, we'll have uh, tag team preaching. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But we're just enjoying being with you and all that God's doing. In fact, I want God to be glorified. I want the saints to be edified. I want the sinner to be justified. And I want Satan to be horrified. Okay, <laughs> amen. And I believe that is happening this week. And we're just enjoying the blessings of the Lord. Remember service tomorrow night. Be in prayer once again. Let's look in St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 2 tonight. And it's a familiar story of the man who was let down from the roof. Somebody had to help him get there. Sometimes we got to help people get to Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they can't get there on their own. And if we would just help them, they could find what they need. And so this man has found it and the people were amazed and I want you to hear what they said. Look in verse 12. Mark chapter 2 verse 12. After this miracle has taken place, look what happened. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. <laughs> I want you to turn to two or three people and tell them you're about to see a new fashion. <laughs> ah, God's going to do a new fashion. Amen. <laughs> I believe God's going to do a new thing. Amen. A new fashion. Amen. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand of praise and you can be seated. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We like to get new clothes. We like to see new fashions. Sometimes the new fashions are introduced and we are amazed at those fashions. We're even intrigued by those fashions because it is something new, it is something different. And we want to try on that fashion and see how that fashion looks on us. It may not fit us or it may not relate to us, but still we are intrigued by a new fashion. Well, can I tell you tonight that I believe in 2016 we need to see a new fashion of what God can do in our midst. We haven't seen all that God is going to do yet. Oh, we've had some great moves of God 
in the past and we talk about the days of old. We talk about the good old days and how God used to move in those days and in yesteryear and the brush arbors and the tent meetings when the power of God would come down. But can I tell you, we haven't seen all that God wants to do in His house. Amen. Just when you think God has done all that He's going to do, He shows up again. He moves in a way that amazes us. I don't know about you, Brother Johnny, He still amazes me. Just about the time I think I've got Him figured out. <laughs> Just about the time I think I know how he's going to move, he moves in a different way. <laughs> Just when I think that he would use a certain individual, he chooses to use another individual. Can I preach here tonight? Mm -hmm. He would raise up someone that we would not even suspect. Someone out of obscurity. Someone who may not fit the part. God can put his hand on that individual and call them and use them. Some of us better get ready because there's going to be a new fashion of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Give God praise in the house of God. Turn me up some. I need some help. Some of us, if we're not careful, we'll get used to this thing. We'll get used to it. We'll get accustomed to it. We'll even take it for granted and get to the place where it doesn't excite us anymore. If we're not careful, we'll just start going through the motions and we will be in a maintenance mode just trying to maintain what we got. Come on, somebody. Trying to keep what we've got trying to hold on to what we've got instead of looking into the harvest and seeing the fields white unto harvest. I don't know about you, church, but I'm ready for God to save who He wants to save, sanctify who He wants to sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost who He wants to fill with the Holy Ghost. It is not about us. It's not about what we want. <laughs> it's not about the way that we think it should be. <laughs> we got to understand something. This is God's church. <laughs> oh, I've, I've heard pastors say it. Oh, this is my church and, and this is my people and, and God's blessing. And I know what they're saying. And, and this is my sermon and God gave it to me. I know what they're saying. But we got to understand something. God gave us the church. <laughs> Can I preach what's on my heart tonight? We are just... We are just stewards of what God gave us. It is His Word, His church, His ministry, His work. And we are His people at His place, worshiping Him. And if it becomes anything else, then we have missed it. Mm. I'm telling you tonight, I feel a new fashion. A new fashion coming back to the church where God is going to amaze us again. Where God is going to surprise us again. Where God is going to send them off the street. Send them in from the ghettos. Send them in from the jail cells. God's going to put His Spirit upon them and draw them to the house of God. And we better get ready. And when they come in, 
You just let the Holy Ghost have his way. When they come in, they're looking for something. Oh, I feel like preaching right there. <laughs> when they come in, they're hungry. They're thirsty. We don't need to quench it. We don't need to hold it back. We need to let the Holy Ghost have his way when they come in the church. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Certain people come in and we think. We better tone it down. You know, we better, we better just, you know, have a quick service tonight. And, you know, let's start at six o'clock sharp and end at seven o'clock dull. <laughs> I, was, I was sharing with some of them last night. I was sharing with some of them last night at the church that that I had to repent for doing that very thing. I'd I'd been praying that my father would come and hear me preach because in 25 years of ministry dad's only heard me preach twice twice and this one time that he came he came to my home church in Lakeland Florida it's where I was born and raised Lakeland Florida and I didn't know he was coming but it was on a Sunday night and he brought his lady friend with him I didn't know she was coming either. And I'm sitting on the platform and the choir's singing behind me. And they're singing, this is the day, this is the day. Dad and his girlfriend walk in. <laughs> that the Lord has made. Oh, no. And I started doing it. I said, I saw them walk in about 6.30. And I started praying. Lord, not tonight, Lord. Let it be one of those calm, cool services tonight, Lord. <laughs> Let's get in and start at six, leave at seven. Come on, Lord, not tonight. How many knows the Lord has a sense of humor? <laughs> It's like the Lord said, ha, 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 ha. is that what you want? <laughs> he poured the honey bucket out. <laughs> I mean, he poured it all out. We had owl running, pew jumping, falling out under the power, tongues and interpretation. We had it all that night. Power of God came down and I told you my dad majored in sociology and he knows about the mind of man so the whole time I was preaching he was just analyzing me, just watching me, just down there. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh, yeah. Oh, uh, you know. And I said, good, I said something good. <laughs> you know, he's just watching me the whole time and, and I gave the altar call and I was hoping that dad would come down and get saved, you know, but he didn't come, but he gave me a thumbs up on the way out. And I called him later on, and I said, I said, Dad, what would you think of the service? He said, well, son, said you, you did pretty good. That's the first time you ever heard me in person. He said, son, you did pretty good, but my girlfriend got a little nervous when one of the men got with the program. Somebody went running past her. <laughs> and he, he called it getting with the program. <laughs> I think a few more of us need to get with the program. Amen. You ever got with the program? <laughs> and so, 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 so she got a little nervous when one of the men got with the program. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, but I had to repent later on, brother. I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for wanting to hold it down when certain people are there, you know. Because that could be the very thing that brings them in. My Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost here. I just came to tell you, don't quench the Spirit. Don't grieve the Spirit. Let the Spirit of God have its way. And people will know that He's in the midst. That's the very thing that they need. <laughs> but if we try to hold it back and... Tone it down. What are we, what are we saying? What are we saying? I mean, people start coming to our churches. Hey, they're looking for something. Yeah, yeah. 
Maybe they're not getting what they need. I'm not talking about any other church. I'm saying maybe they're hungry for more. He Maybe there's a longing there and they're hungry for more of God and they're not getting what they need. Oh God, let it be said that when they come to the house of God, there's people there that are in love with the Lord and in love with one another. Give God praise in the house of God, somebody. And I'm telling you tonight, (laughs) there's a new fashion coming back. It's coming back to the church. (laughs) And you talk about getting over there on the other side, and if you don't like shouting and all. Hey, we better get ready for some shouting on this side because, uh, because, in, the, because in these last days, we're going to shout the victory. We're going to magnify God. We're going to glorify Him. Yes. Hallelujah. Because there's some people that are living in the problem. Come on. Yeah, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Some people are living in the problem. But there's other people that are living in the promise. Come on. Because in the last days, God's going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. You got a choice. You can either live in the problem or the promise. You can either worry or you can worship. You can either sing or sigh. You can either magnify or you can moan. You can either walk the floor in hypertension or wave your hands in honor. Praise God. You can either wave the flag of surrender or you can hoist the banner of victory. I choose to praise Him. I choose to give Him glory. He's worthy of my praise in every situation of life. I'm telling you, the fashion is coming back. The way we used to rejoice. I feel this, Bishop. (laughs) The way we used to glorify God. The way we used to magnify him. You remember when you came to the house of God and you knew that something was going to happen, but you didn't know when. <laughs> you knew that somebody had the key to the service. Uh huh. You remember that? <laughs> somebody had the key, and if they obeyed God, we had a time. <laughs> you can look for it. It's coming back to the house of God. People are hungry, people are thirsty. Give God a shout of praise if you're ready for it, somebody. I'm telling you. Oh, I know there's a great falling away. I know. I know it. But I also know that God's up to something. I know the thief comes. I know the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But every time the thief comes, the Lord comes too. And what the thief would want to steal, God wants to give. What the thief would want to kill, God wants to live. What the thief would want to destroy, God wants to establish. And that fashion is coming back. Now, you say, what kind of fashion, preacher? What kind of fashion are you talking about? Can I give you three of those fashions in this story? Three fashions here. In this story that I see. That I believe are coming back. To the church. You're going to see it. And I believe it's coming. Three fashions in this story. Now this story begins. With the word getting out. That Jesus was in the house. (laughs) He entered into Capernaum again. As was his custom. He comes back, and the Bible said it was noised abroad (laughs) that Jesus was in the house. (laughs) Not a joke teller. Not a joke teller, not an entertainer. (laughs) Not a Hollywood superstar. (laughs) But Jesus was in the house. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And when the word got out that Jesus was in the house, the house wasn't big enough to hold the people. Come on. Hey, you get Jesus in the house, this church won't be big enough to hold the people. When they, when they hear that Jesus is there, the, the saving Jesus, the sanctifying Jesus. 
The Holy Ghost baptizing Jesus. The healing Jesus. The delivering Jesus. The conquering Jesus. The coming again Jesus. <laughs> and there's only one way to get him here and that is to praise him. Why don't you give God praise and welcome him in this house tonight. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. <laughs> now, i got to hurry. <laughs> the word got out that Jesus was in the house, and they came from everywhere. I mean, the house was so full, <laughs> some even standing outside the house. <laughs> and they're, they're trying to figure out how can we get in. How can we get in to Jesus? And there's four brothers there, and they want to help their brother get to Jesus. And they, they couldn't get in for the press. <laughs> there's such a crowd there. <laughs> kind of like the one with the issue of blood having to press <laughs> through the crowd. But, but these men, oh, let me just take my time here. These, these men trying to find a way that they can get their brother to Jesus. Now, they, now, now man, we can't, can't get in the door. We can't, can't get in the side. Hey, Maybe somehow we can just lift him up. Right? I mean, I mean, trying to get him up that roof. Right? Yeah. Trying to get him up the side of it. How, how, how could they do such a thing? How, how did they do it? But that's what touched the heart of the master. That, that they would go to that extreme to get their brother to Jesus. That they would go that far. That they would go to that length to get their brother to Jesus. That's what touched him. And Jesus is amazed at this because right here, here's the first fashion. There was a fashion of faith. There was a new fashion of faith. Did you see it? Verse 5. What did it say in verse 5? When Jesus saw their faith. I mean... Look at the faith of these men, willing to do something like that. To lift that cot up the side of that house and tear open the roof and let their brother down. Come on, somebody. Can you picture it? What, what faith? This is a new fashion of faith and had never been seen before. And Jesus saw it. Can I tell you tonight, that's all that the Lord's looking for. That is all that he's looking for. Our money doesn't move him. Our position doesn't move him. Our church doesn't move him. The, the position we hold or the places we go or the knowledge that we have acquired does not please him one iota. There's only one thing that pleases him and that is our faith in him. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Oh yeah, we got to live by faith, walk by faith, <laughs> preach by faith. We're, we're saved by faith. We're justified by faith. We're kept by faith. <laughs> we walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> and that's all that the Lord's looking for. This was a new fashion of faith. And I want to tell you, I believe in these last days. We're going to see a new fashion of faith. I, I, I'm just looking for it. Because you know that the Lord's in the house. Amen. You know the Lord's in the house when faith is working. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it. I've seen it. You can feel faith rising up. Can't you? Yeah. You can feel faith rising up in the church and in the people of God. When a song is being sung or the lessons being taught or the words being preached, you can feel faith rising up. You know that they've accepted it. You know you're getting through because faith is rising up. You can feel that faith. i felt it many times. Oh yeah, I can tell when faith's working in the church. <laughs> when people start raising their hands and magnifying God and I can see it on their faces. I can feel it because faith is working and I know God is there. Amen. <laughs> My God. <laughs> I'm telling you, Pastor, you're going to see a new fashion of faith in this church. I believe it. 
That people, thank you, Holy Ghost, that people are going to do whatever they need to do to get in the house of God. That, that they're not going to let circumstances hinder them. Mm, they're not going to let opposition stop them. It doesn't matter what they got to do to get to Jesus, they're going to do it. If they have to change their schedule, they, oh, if they have to turn off the television, oh, they know, they know that they got to get in the presence of God. They know that they need a touch from Him. My Lord, I feel this tonight. There's going to be a new fashion of faith, Bishop. Yes. You're going to see it in this church. I believe You're going to see this body coming together. <laughs> Let me tell you something else. Not only is there going to be a new fashion of faith, but I believe there's going to be a new fashion of forgiveness. Yeah. A new fashion of forgiveness. Verse 5. Did you see it? Verse 5, again, Jesus looks at this man with cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. and his mind is telling his body what to do, but his body can't respond. The, the head, I'm going somewhere here, the head is giving direction to the body, but the body cannot respond to it because it's impaired. It's afflicted. Did you know, Pastor, that's the problem in a lot of our churches? Okay, okay. You, you are the head of this church. The pastor is the head of the church. He gives the signal to the body. He, he gives the command to the body. He orders the body. He tells the body what to do. A lot of our pastors are doing that. They're telling the body what to do. But the body cannot respond to it because it's been afflicted. And if it's not that way, it's the other way around. The body's ready to do something. The body's just waiting on the command from the head. But the head's impaired. Some of our pastors need revival too. Hello. Some of, our, some of our evangelists need revival too. The head needs revival. I said the head needs revival. Because the head, huh, hey, vision comes from the head. Direction comes from the head. And the head's got to be clear. But if it doesn't give a clear signal to the body, then they can't receive it. They can't respond to it. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying I want God to heal the head and the body. Come on. Yes. Praise God. Come on. Come on. I want God to heal the head and the body. So that when the head gives the command, the body can respond. That's what I want to see. And here is that forgiveness. Here's that forgiveness. This man, he's, he's coming from his head. He, he's telling his body what to do, but his body can't do it. He's, I, mean, I mean, if your head is in sync with your body, then your head will tell your right arm to go up, and it just goes up. Because my body's in sync with my head. It received, oh God, Come on. It received the signal from my head. Yeah. That's revival. Yeah. When you just tell the body what to do and they just do it. They, yeah. they, see, see my, my hand, my arm didn't think about it once it got the signal. Come on. Once it got the command. Yes, it, it, it didn't say, well, I might not do it. I don't know if I want to do it or not. I, don't, I really don't feel like doing it. No, it just went up. See, yeah. that's, that's the way God wants to move in his church. Yeah. When, yeah. Come on, somebody. Mm. Yeah. But sometimes we don't understand why the body doesn't receive the command we're giving it. 
Could it be that the body's impaired? <laughs> and sometimes we want to get mad at the body. And <laughs> why don't you do what I tell you to do? Right? Hello. <laughs> We want to get mad at the body and kick the body and beat the body some more. Hey, the body's been hurt bad enough. The body needs to be healed. <laughs> and Jesus and Jesus saw how this man's body was afflicted. But what does he say? He says, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. He, he needs healing of his body. But what the Lord does is from the inside out. And it's what David said. He said, he forgives my iniquities and heals my diseases. From the inside out. He forgave him. And they said, oh, who can forgive sin but God? Who, who is this man? Who, who does he think he is? See, some people don't want the fashion. They can't accept it. Because it boggles their mind. <laughs> it blows them away. <laughs> but Jesus said, I said, so why do you think those things in your heart? <laughs> Whether it's easy for me to say, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee, or rise and take up thy bed and walk. It's just as easy for him to say one thing as it is for him to say another. It's just as easy for him to say, thy sins be forgiven, as it is for him to say, rise, take up your bed and walk. <laughs> and so Jesus says, so you may know, so you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. He said to the sick of the palsy, rise, take up your bed and walk. You see, there was a new fashion of faith there was a new fashion of forgiveness, and, and then there was a new fashion of freedom. <laughs> freedom. This man that had his back on his bed now had his bed on his back. <laughs> That's my shout. You get your own. Amen. <laughs> That was the freedom that Jesus offered him. He was now carrying the thing that was carrying him. He was holding up the thing that was holding him up. <laughs> I want to tell you, when freedom is in the house, I said when freedom is in the house, people can leave carrying the thing that's been carrying them. Hey, it's time to start controlling the thing that's been controlling us. <laughs> that's right. It's Amen. time to start holding up the thing that's been holding us up. Come on. For all the world to see and say, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm not depending on this anymore. It's under my feet. <laughs> so I want to tell you, in this story, there was that fashion of faith to where they were so amazed. They said, look at that faith. That these men would do something like that to their brother. That they would tear the roof off. There was even a new fashion of forgiveness. That this man could be forgiven. Even though he's physically impaired. It was more of an inside issue. Than an outside issue. And then there was a new fashion of freedom. That now he's carrying the thing. That's been carrying him. I want to tell you, Anchor Fellowship Church, it's time to get ready for this new fashion. Praise God. And in these last days, I'm praying for it. I'm praying for it when it's, when it's the same old thing and, and church is not very exciting and it doesn't really mean much to us anymore. That some churches are not having service on Sunday night. They say they can't get people to come. You get a new fashion in that church <laughs> and they'll start coming. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. 
So I just came by to tell you tonight, I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. A new fashion of faith to where we will do whatever it takes, whatever we have to do to get a miracle. And then there'll be a new fashion of forgiveness where the Lord can touch us from the inside out and restore us. And then there'll be a new fashion of freedom to where we can carry the thing that's been carrying us. And I tell you, there's going to be some people that are going to be saying that very thing. Hey, we've never seen him on this fashion before. We've never seen it like that. We don't have that in our church. We don't have that where we are. I'm going to tell you, God's ready to do it if we're ready to receive it. And, mm, and it doesn't matter what fashion it is. If it's in the book, I want it, I receive it, and I'm looking for it. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Would you bow your heads with me? Father, we need we need to see a new fashion tonight. Lord, we need a new fashion in our churches a new fashion of faith, forgiveness, and freedom that will draw men and women to you, that they will be amazed at who you are and what you can do. Lord, let that happen again. On the day of Pentecost, they, they were amazed and in doubt, saying, what meaneth this? Oh, God. They were amazed at Stephen when his face shone bright as an angel. They were amazed at Moses when he came down from the mountain. He had to cover his face. Oh, bring back the amazement again, Lord. Bring back that new fashion. That new fashion. God, do a new thing in our midst. A new fashion of faith, Lord, that we will do whatever we need to do to get in your presence. That we won't let circumstances hinder us. And Lord, that there'll be a new fashion of forgiveness, Lord, that you will forgive us and heal us from the inside out. Spirit, soul, and body. And there'll be a new fashion of freedom where we can hold up the thing that's been holding us up we can lift it up as a testimony of your power and glory. How many? How many under the sound of my voice would like to join me tonight? Some of us need to get the passion back, the fire back, the excitement back. Some of our churches need that excitement back. I want us to pray for the churches in Coffee County tonight. I want us to pray for this nation as a whole. I want us to pray for the head of the church. And I want us to pray for the body of the church. That God would heal it tonight and restore it. Because I want to tell you, in some of our churches, the head is giving the command to the body, but they can't. They can't respond to it. In other conditions, the body's ready to go forward, but the head doesn't know what direction to go in. I want us to pray for the church tonight. Would you join me? Let's find a place in this altar, everyone that will. And let's pray for this new fashion to return to the house of God again. Would you join me? Father, right now, Lord, we come tonight. God, we want to pray a twofold prayer for the head of the church and the body of the church. Lord God, that you would heal the head. Oh God, heal the head. 
touch the head of the church, that they will give a clear vision to the church, that they will give direction to the church. Oh, God. Oh, God, touch the head tonight. Is almost gone. Hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me on. Take my hand. Precious Lord.